Since these days, we take it for granted that we can transmit text, audio, and even images all over the world in an instant. In fact, there's a good chance that you're watching this video wirelessly across the ocean, thousands of miles away. Hello there, friend. Hi, sir. It's only been this way for a bit over a century, though, and there was a time when the scientific consensus believed that sending electromagnetic signals like radio waves over the horizon was just impossible. Due to this belief, famous inventor Nikola Tesla came up with a different idea for sending information wirelessly over long distances, conducting an electrical current through the Earth itself. While his initial plan was simply aimed at sending messages from the US to the UK and ships at sea, it eventually evolved into a design for a global wireless energy system with devices drawing power from the Earth with no need for wires. Now, as grand as these visions were, Tesla's colleagues, competitors, and financiers were less than convinced, and the story of the Tesla Tower quickly went from one of optimism and ingenuity to, well, one of eccentricity, tragedy, and some say madness. Tesla Tower, or Wardenclyffe Tower as it was officially called because Tesla had bought the land in Shoreham, Long Island from developer James S. Warden, was the principal part of the inventor's design for transmitting electricity through the Earth. Like most scientists at the time, Tesla believed that radio waves, which he doubted even existed, would travel in straight lines and therefore be useless in transmitting energy or information over the horizon since they'd just shoot off into space. Instead, in the late 1890s, Tesla began experimenting with the electrical charge of the Earth itself. He theorized that if he injected a current into the ground at the right frequency, the Earth's charge would amplify it into waves that could be harnessed from anywhere on the planet for power or communication. To complete the required circuit, the charge would be returned through the air. This relied on a theory by Malin Loomis, who posited that there was a layer of Earth's atmosphere that was highly conductive. Tesla had not tested this theory extensively, but he had achieved wireless power transmission at his facility in Colorado Springs using the Tesla coil, or magnifying transmitter as he called it, as one of his most famous inventions that was patented in 1891. This involved illuminating geyser vacuum tubes planted in the ground several miles away with an electrical current sent through the earth, though some still debate the veracity of that experiment. Are you tired of the old ways of working? Well, say goodbye to the 9 to 5 grinds and welcome a world of new possibilities. Say hello to today's sponsor, Skillshare, the ultimate platform for creative careers, and it's here to help you redefine work and find fulfillment. Skillshare understands that traditional work doesn't fit everyone. That's why they offer hundreds of career-focused classes to help you design a career that suits you perfectly. Whether you're a self-taught learner, a career changer, or maybe just an expert side hustler, Skillshare has got something just for you. So what are your creative and career goals this year? Is it to explore your options, find your creative voice, achieve more financial stability? Well, Skillshare's got you covered. With Skillshare, you can dive into classes like productivity and time management, one of my favorites, to make more time for the things that fulfill you, or maybe personal projects to build your portfolio and get gigs you want to attract clients for the work that you love doing. And here's the best part. You get to learn at your own pace and be a part of an incredible community of like-minded individuals. Skillshare gives you the opportunity to take control of your career and your creative path. And guess what? As a special offer, the first thousand people who use the link in the video description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So don't wait any longer. Join Skillshare today. There's a link below. And now back to today's video. Tesla was apparently convinced, though, and believed that he could transmit power not just over a few miles in Colorado, but around the entire world. People could power machines or pick up audio and other informational signals from anywhere around the globe without having to plug into a grid, and as the current returned through the atmosphere, it would even create a glow that could be used to light cities and shipping lanes. This world wireless system would rely on a system of 30 towers like the one Tesla ultimately built at Wardenclyffe. These would take power generated by industrial alternators and pump it into the earth as low-frequency long waves. Upon returning to New York from Colorado Springs, Tesla's utopian visions of a future with global wireless power had grown to leviathan proportions and included harnessing the sun as a power source, weather control, and the end of war, because, well, why not? He immediately began writing to important investors to get funding for the Wardenclyffe Tower.
Tesla's ventures in Colorado Springs have been funded by John Jacob Astor, a friend of Tesla's and one of the richest men in the world who would later die in the 1912 sinking of the Titanic, by the way. Back in New York, Tesla moved into the luxurious Waldorf Astoria Hotel on Park Avenue, where he wined and dined other potential investors, starting with George Westinghouse, an engineer and entrepreneur who had made a fortune manufacturing electrical equipment. Tesla proposed that Westinghouse provide all the electric machinery while retaining ownership and receiving a large share of Tesla's company. Westinghouse declined, but did lend the investor $6,000, which is well over $200,000 today. John Jacob Astor also bought 500 shares of the company, but Tesla had little luck convincing investors until wealthy banker and magnate JP Morgan became interested in wireless transmissions after Italian inventor Marconi managed to use radio signals to send reports of the America's Cup yacht races to New York from Long Island. Morgan was convinced that wireless transmission would replace transatlantic telegraph cables and wanted to bet on which horse would win the wireless race. After a meeting, Morgan signed a contract for an investment of $150,000 in exchange for 51% of Tesla's company. This was no small sum, the equivalent of over $5 million today. With Morgan's money, Tesla went straight to work. He placed orders for generators and transformers with Westinghouse and bought 200 acres of land on Long Island from James S. Warden, who was in the process of building a resort community called Wardenclyffe on Sound. Together, the two men envisioned Wardenclyffe becoming the hub of the world wireless system and a radio city filled with factories and housing for thousands of workers. However, this dream was pretty short-lived and Tesla's associates quickly lost their optimism for the project. Marconi soon proved the scientific consensus wrong, including Tesla, by transmitting radio signals over the horizon. In December 1901, the Italian scientists transmitted three clicks, Morse code for the letter S, across the Atlantic from Poldu in Cornwall to St. John's, Newfoundland in Canada. This was 2200 miles or 3500 kilometers, much farther than was thought possible, and though modern scientists are actually skeptical of Marconi's claims, it was enough to worry Tesla and his investors. The competition seemed to motivate Tesla, though, who decided his system at Wardenclyffe would have to be even bigger and more powerful. He wanted to quickly demonstrate the system's effectiveness by transmitting Morse code wirelessly to Europe, as well as a telephone call and images, and of course, that's not even to mention electrical power. Specifically, Tesla decided he needed a tower at least 300 feet tall and possibly as tall as 600, so that's somewhere between 90 and 180 meters. The problem was that this would cost more than the $150,000 that JP Morgan had agreed to, most of which Tesla still hadn't received. Instead, it was going to cost $450,000, three times as much. Morgan refused, foreshadowing the financial problems that Tesla was about to face. Ultimately, Tesla conceded to build a tower just 186 feet or 57 meters tall. It stood on a wooden frame that had a steel cupola at the top that measured 68 feet or 21 meters in diameter and weighed 55 tons. Tesla connected the tower to the earth via a steel-lined hollow shaft measuring 10 by 12 feet or 3 by 3.5 meters inserted 120 feet or 37 meters into the ground. Tesla claimed that at the bottom of the shaft he had pushed 16 iron pipes measuring 300 feet or 90 meters even deeper into the ground. He would then send the current through these pipes to take hold of the earth. He stated that this would allow him to, quote, have a grip on the earth so the whole of this globe can quiver. Now, below the tower, Tesla built a facility designed by his friend and architect Stanford White. It housed a laboratory, instrumentation room, boiler room, and machine shop, as well as a room for the coal fired 200 kilowatt Westinghouse alternating current generator. The inventor brought in extensive equipment, including transformers, glass blowing machinery, X ray machines, Tesla coils, and even a remote control boat. Little else is known about the facility because Tesla minimized press contact, which has led to creative speculation about other aspects of the Wardenclyffe complex. For instance, the tower's cupola featured a five-foot hole in its top where Tesla mounted ultraviolet lights. No one knows what these were for, though some guess they were meant to create an ionized path to tap into the conductive layer of the atmosphere that was central to Tesla's theories. Other mysterious parts of the facility include four tunnels 100 feet or 30 meters long, radiating north, south, east, and west from the tower's main shaft. Were they part of the tower's electrical connection to the Earth's resonance, or merely drainage tunnels? And 
nobody really knows. With little inside information getting out, everything appeared to be going great to the public. In 1902, Tesla told the press, quote, We have been sending wireless messages for long distances from this station for some time. And in June of that year, he more or less moved his operation permanently to Wardenclyffe, abandoning his laboratory in Manhattan. However, Tesla's private correspondence paints a much different picture. By the fall of 1901, letters between him and Stanford White show the inventor was already worried about foreclosure on the facility. By 1903, Tesla was desperate and wrote to J.P. Morgan, Will you help me or let my great work, almost complete, go to pots? Morgan basically blew him off with his response, saying, I have received your letter, and in reply would say that I should not feel disposed at present to make any further advances. After receiving the banker's rejection on the 14th of July 1903, Tesla initiated what has come to be the greatest mystery of the Wardenclyffe facility. That night, the Tesla tower turned on and shot flashes of light up into the Long Island sky, which it continued to do for several nights after. Tesla never said what the flashes meant, and the tower was never turned on again. Things only got worse from there. Not only was Marconi regularly sending radio transmissions with increasing sophistication, but the 1903 Wall Street panic made investors more cautious and skeptical. Tesla continued looking for funding and even approached the US Navy, but had no luck. JP Morgan ignored the inventor's continued pleas or replied curtly through his secretary. Everything finally broke down in 1906. Stanford White was murdered by Harry Kendall Thor after the architect had an affair with his wife, actress Evelyn Nesbitt. One of Tesla's inventors, William Rankin, also had a heart attack and passed away. Tesla's manager of the Wardenclyffe facility, George Scherf, quit, presumably because he wasn't getting paid. Many modern historians speculate that at this point, Tesla had a nervous breakdown as a result of these events. Still living at the Waldorf Astoria, Tesla took out a mortgage on the Wardenclyffe property to pay the considerable bill he'd racked up, something that he had to repeat in 1908. With no new money forthcoming and debts being called in, Tesla finally abandoned Wardenclyffe in 1911. In 1912, Tesla's investors started asking questions. Namely, where was their money? Tesla didn't have an answer for them. And the truth was, he couldn't even pay his rent, much less the investments that the press had estimated at over a million dollars, or nearly $36 million today. In fact, he still owed $20,000 to George C. Bolt, the owner of the Waldorf Astoria. That's more than half a million dollars adjusted for inflation. Bolt eventually foreclosed on the two mortgages Tesla had taken out on the Wardenclyffe facility, but it did little to satisfy the debt. Bolt demolished the Tesla tower and sold it for $1,750 worth of scrap, and he then put the land up for sale. The property passed through numerous hands before ending up with the Agri Corporation, a Belgium-German manufacturer of various photography, film, and imaging products. They ran a factory on the site, which they closed in 1992. After cleaning it up, Agfa put the property up for sale in 2009 for $1.65 million. A non-profit organization bought it in 2013 with funding from an unlikely source, the Oatmeal Webcomic. The Wardenclyffe site had already been marked as a testament to Tesla's ingenuity in 1976. With the facility's main building still standing, representatives from the Brookhaven National Laboratory installed a plaque from Yugoslavia commemorating Tesla, who had been born in Serbia, or at the time part of Yugoslavia, in 1856. However, the plaque was stolen in 2009, and Tesla fans decided they wanted something grander to honor the visionary. Matthew Inman, creator of the Oatmill, took up the reins and joined the Tesla Science Center at Wardenclyffe non-profit organization to start an Indiegogo crowd funding campaign to create a museum and educational science center on the property. They raised their goal of $850,000 in a week, in part due to donations from business magnate Elon Musk. Now mostly restored, the Tesla Science Center at Wardenclyffe offers tours of the historical facilities, educational programs, rotating exhibits and celebrations. They plan to expand their educational programs to provide even more ways to engage children in the arts and sciences and encourage and improve science education. Renovations of the facilities are ongoing as well, plus the center offers a number of virtual programs and tours. Anyone can can visit the historical site online and revel in Tesla's genius and the ambition, if not fulfilled, of his dream of a world with wireless power. And yeah, if you took the plaque, give it back.